Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I am your humble narrator, and welcome back to, uh, I guess the annual video of Dayton Does. <laughs> it's been a long time, I've been off doing, uh, Reddit readings, neckbeard stuff over on RedX, R-E-D-D-X. If you haven't visited me over there, I definitely would appreciate it. But it seems that the time of the year has rolled around again, and we have the Steam Awards to look forward to. I'm sure most people have voted. It's like the last day of voting. <laughs> but I did want to get this video out since uh, it hit pretty good in, I think it was 2018 or 2019. And uh, I do want to give my thoughts, especially since I've been out of the gaming market for a little bit. My computer took a dump in like October of last year, last last year. But now we're back, and we're playing catch-up, and uh, this should be a good thing to help with that, maybe. Also, uh, comments, you know, if people have suggestions that aren't listed here, of course. Uh, I will cast my votes and pass my judgment, and uh, you can all ridicule me about uh, <laughs> my garbage taste or whatever. So, let's go ahead, we'll jump into it. Here it is, the Steam Awards, vote now! You've chosen the nominees. Yeah, I don't think any of my nominees got picked, but that's okay, isn't it? <laughs> the category is Game of the Year, VR Game of the Year, Labor of Love, Better with Friends, Outstanding Visual Style, Most Innovative Gameplay, Best Game You Suck At, Best Soundtrack, Outstanding Story Rich Game, and Sit Back and Relax. My favorites, as always, probably Best Game You Suck At and Sit Back and Relax, but I also uh, can dig on Outstanding Visual Style. Game of the Year, I mean, that's the big one, isn't it? Maybe we should be doing these in reverse order, so uh, Game of the Year is the last vote that I cast. Does that make sense? I think that's what we're going to do. So uh, everything I said, flip reverse it, is going to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's uh, see how it goes. So our first category, sit back and relax. And so I shall. I'll be the first to admit to you that I don't know a whole heck of a lot about these games. I have heard of Unpacking, there is Potion Craft, which I actually do own, the only one of these that I owned, <laughs> Farming Simulator 22, uh, I guess some people are into that for some reason, Townscaper of course, a little bit of casual city building, uh, and Dorf Romantic, which I have no idea, it also looks like some casual city building. Well enough, it seems pretty obvious what I'm going to vote for given my uh, <laughs> proclivity towards creating potions. And yes, I do have potion craft, so that is what we are going to vote for. Probably second, I would put unpacking, um, then Dorf Romantic Townscaper in 3 and 4. You can interchange those at your leisure. <laughs> and then Farming Simulator at the very bottom, bring it up the rear. I'm not too fond of... Uh, realism simulators or anything like that although you know people do have uh some love for it so maybe i shouldn't write it off so quick i've never played the farming simulator games full disclosure so whatever it is what it is potion craft unpacking uh those are my top two for sure sitting back relaxing Outstanding story, rich game. We've got Life is Strange, True Colors. I see your true colors. Cyberpunk, uh, heard a lot of stuff about that. Resident Evil Village, yes, the big mommy vampire. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Days Gone, I think that's a, a PlayStation game, right? It's come on over to the PC for some reason. And then, of course, Mass Effect, which... Some people are super into, and I am not one of those people. I mean, Story Rich is not really a game genre that I enjoy anyways. It seems uh, a bit too stuffy, you know what I'm saying? I don't really play games to sit and watch a story. I play games because I want to, you know, play the game. Mass Effect is probably the front runner as far as, uh, you know, a game whose story I enjoy. But Cyberpunk? I don't know, man. It definitely does have some merit to it, at the very least. The problem with Cyberpunk is um, you need a really beefy PC, and even then, the frame rates and whatnot aren't that great from what I've heard. Maybe it's been patched up and is doing better. And really, I don't know if we're supposed to be judging it on that anyways. It's like story strictly, and uh, I haven't played any of these really uh, except Mass Effect, and I'm unsure which Mass Effect this is. Or which one I've played, so I'm just gonna vote for it. <laughs> Why not? And uh, that should do just fine. 
I think Cyberpunk would probably be my uh, pick for second place. Just on principle, I really do like Cyberpunk uh, as just, as a genre, as a theme, not necessarily the game because I have yet to dive into it. It doesn't go on sale cheap enough. My rig is beefy enough now, and I'm sure I'll get into it at some point, but uh, that is a point far in the future. Then we've got uh, Resident Evil Village uh, bringing up third place. Life is Strange I would throw in fourth because why not? Mostly because I don't know a damn thing about Days Gone. Like I've said, I've been out of the loop for quite a little while. So maybe I'm completely wrong on that. I haven't like dug through reviews or seen what the game is about uh, before jumping into this list. So whatever, it is what it is. Story rich, great, good for you. <laughs> I got Netflix. I don't really need a story rich game though. Uh, best soundtrack. Ooh, another one that I'm not particularly impressed by we got guardians of the galaxy near replicant persona 5 oh my goodness is that persona 5 strikers yeah and then guilty gear survive as well as demon slayer wow that's awesome super anime ish e <laughs> guilty gear and demon slayer both really anime ish i guess persona 5 strikers has a uh, a little bit of that bent to it as well I'll be real with you, uh, probably Marvel, with the money that they have, put out the best soundtrack. Have you heard the Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack? <laughs> I don't know what it's like in the video game, but in the movies, god damn, that is some hot stuff. So, um, I think I'm gonna go for it. Persona 5 would probably be my pick for second place, then Near Replicant, then Guilty Gear Survive, and uh, Demon Slayer behind that. I guess that's how it's gonna go. Again, I'm not really super impressed by any of this stuff. It doesn't feel like I missed a whole lot. <laughs> like, my computer took a poop, and then the gaming industry just paused while they waited for me to get back to my computer. Uh, there's just not a whole lot of stuff that came out, and I was like, I need to play that. Either that, or it came to Nintendo Switch, and I was able to play some form or fashion of it. Obviously, none of these <laughs> is what I'm talking about, but... Uh, yeah, great soundtrack, Guardians of the Galaxy. What else do you need to know, really? Best game you suck at, World War Z Aftermath. Ooh, I do have that one. Naraka, Blade Point. That one has been suggested to me quite a little bit. We've got Neo 2, which again, samurai, sword, slashy, swingy. That's pretty cool. Age of Empires 4. Oh, Age of Empires. We've grown up with it, haven't we? And uh, Battlefield 2042, bleh. <laughs> Just on principle, don't play Battlefield 42, all right? I'm not gonna tell you what to do, but I'm kinda telling you what to do. Um, World War Z Aftermath, I don't know if it's actually that hard. To be fair, it's the only one that I've experienced. We don't have any like really gripping stuff like Mordhau or Rainbow Six Siege, which are the kind of games that pop up when I think of a game that I, I suck at. Age of Empires, I mean, it's not easy to get good, but once you've got the strategy down, yeah, it's it's a lot more doable than some of the, these other action-y type games. So, uh, World War Z, I'm probably going to give it second place. Uh, I want to give Naraka first place because it is so badass and has been suggested to me so many times that I might actually have to pull the trigger. Neo 2, yes indeed. Um, Age of Empires 4 above that in fourth place on principle just because I can't place Battlefield 2042 any higher than last place. <laughs> Original Battlefield, I mean, there's some good stuff. But they really dropped the ball on Battlefield 5 and just have not picked it up since. So uh, that is what it is. Best game that I suck at? I guess it's Naraka, despite never having played it. I went into World War Z expecting something uh, truly gripping and difficult, and it's just not. <laughs> the zombie hordes are really cool, but yeah, it's, it's relatively easy to mow them down. You want zombies that you could actually be scared of? A zombie horde that will make you cower in fear? You gotta boot up Killing Floor 2. Play on Hell on Earth. <laughs> You'll never make it to the end. And that's beautiful. World War Z is kind of like, yeah, it's bro hard, you know? They still got waypoints and all this stuff. It, it, it ain't that hard, let's be honest. I guess we just didn't get that many hard games this year. Which is good, because it's one of my favorite categories. Most innovative gameplay. We've got Inscription. 
Yes, cards. Super innovative. <laughs> 12 minutes. Uh, I guess that's something. Uh, Mon cage. Is that what that is? Well, it kind of looks cool, I guess. And then uh, Bethesda, they put out Deathloop. Oh, my God. Is that innovative? I guess it is. You know, time play and whatnot. And then we've got Loop Hero, which is actually super interesting to me. Go roundy round. So Inscription and Loop Hero are really the ones that jump out to me here. Uh, I did bash Inscription for being a card game, but I know it is more than that. Deathloop is definitely one that I've looked into and am not impressed by. So I'm probably going to rank that at the bottom. But between Inscription and Loop Hero, ah, I think I'd be more inclined to play Inscription. I do like card games. I've put a lot of hours into Slay the Spire, both on PC and Switch. And uh, I'm sure that Inscription could grab a hold of me if I were to give it a chance. So I'll say Inscription's in first place. Loop Hero comes in uh, second place. Then we've got, uh, I guess... I kind of like Mon Cage. It looks cool. <laughs> 12 minutes and then Deathloop. I don't know a whole lot about slots uh, 3 and 4, but I'm sure somebody could tell me in the comments if one of them is worth playing. Some really nice, like, indie kind of offerings in the most innovative gameplay, which I guess is to be expected, but you do love to see it, honestly. Also, I forgot to vote for Naraka Blade Point. Okay. <laughs> Next up, we have Outstanding Visual Style. Oh my god. I really do dig on this. We've got Psychonauts 2, Subnautica Below Zero, Little Nightmares 2, Bright Infinite Memory. Is that Bright Memory Infinite? <laughs> Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. That's what it is. And then Forza Horizon 5, which honestly does look amazing, even though uh, racy cars aren't really my thing necessarily. Psychonauts was a huge part of my teenagerhood, and I am so excited to see a number two. Subnautica, I've definitely experienced a time or two or ten. <laughs> I put a lot of hours into Subnautica. Not so much Subnautica Below Zero, but uh, we'll get to that eventually, I guess. So those are the two that are competing in my heart for the very toppest slot. Uh, Little Nightmares, I guess it's okay. Bright Memory Infinite, also, yeah, I guess we'll, we'll put that in the okay category. Forza, I mean, judging just on the visual style, yeah, I'm pretty into it, if I can be quite honest. I feel bad putting Forza into the last place just because it's a racing game. Because as far as racing games go, it's a pretty good one from what I heard. So, um, okay. First things first, we gotta decide the, the top two slots. And I think I'm gonna go for Psychonauts 2. Largely because it does have a more adventurous style. That has always kind of been its thing with characters that look like they started as comics and then were rendered into characters. So, uh, just on principle, yes, Psychonauts 2. I mean, I love Subnautica, but not necessarily for the visual style. It's really cool to see a, an alien planet and whatnot, but it's not, like, anything mind-blowing necessarily. I still give it second place, because I'm a nice guy. <laughs> Bright Infinite Memory looks amazing to me. Um, I mean, it is just a kind of shooter, but... I'm pretty into shooters. <laughs> and then we've got, uh, I think Force Slot is going to go to Forza. Like I said, it looks freaking amazing, even though it is a racing game. And then Little Nightmares bringing up the rear. It's just kind of dark and dusky and like, ooh, something that we've seen before, but done slightly differently. So I don't know if I can call it an outstanding visual style. It be what it be. Some people like it, but um, yeah, I don't think it's for me necessarily. What are we, like, halfway through now? God, I gotta talk faster. <laughs> Better with friends! We've got Valheim. Absolutely, ridiculously amazing. Back for Blood. Yeah, I heard some good things about that, too. Halo Infinite. Oh, Jesus! I have put so much time into that. It Takes Two. It's pretty legit, honestly. I've, I've heard some really good stuff about that. And then Crab Game, which is just <laughs> free to play, totally derpy. That is definitely last place, without question. No, I haven't played it. No, I won't be caught dead playing it, okay? So, as far as the top slot, God, man. Halo Infinite really got me. 
I love that multiplayer. I have not played the main season or whatever, but yeah, we are talking about better with friends. And the multiplayer is definitely better with friends. Valheim, oh god, and Back for Blood really are just, they're so delicious. All three of them, all four of them really. It Takes Two also has some merit. I'm not super big into puzzling with friends because it just evolves into a, a fight every time. <laughs> At least the way I play puzzlers. But um, yeah, there are some really delicious, tasty offerings here. And uh, for me, it's between Halo Infinite and Valheim. Back for Blood, honestly, I was expecting something Left for Dead-ish. And it's not really that necessarily. It is cool, it is different, but it doesn't scratch the itch that I was hoping it would scratch. So, maybe that's on me. Um, I think that's going to go into third place. So, Back for Blood third, It Takes Two fourth, Crab Game. I I'm just not even going to rank that. <laughs> it fell off onto the floor. But man, Halo Infinite versus Valheim. They are two very disparate games, both of which I have played. Uh, Halo Infinite, yeah, shooty, frag the noobs, you know what I'm saying? Valheim is, uh, build a base, fight off trolls. <laughs> it's amazing, it kind of reminds me of Rust, which really is one of the games that I put the most hours into, so I guess how long could I play it is the real question, and the answer to that is, yeah, I think I could see myself playing Valheim much, much longer than I could see myself playing Halo Infinite. That might not be the correct way to judge it, but both of them are are massive with friends, like <laughs> friends to help you build your base, friends to help you capture the flag, or, you know, get ahead in Slayer as long as your friends aren't total garbage being killed. <laughs> Keep your KDR up or else I'm gonna not be a friend anymore. So yeah, I guess Valheim does pull ahead because even people who aren't necessarily like elite gamer boys can contribute in their own way. I'm like, okay, here's an axe. Go chop some wood. <laughs> Basically, anybody could handle that. My five-year-old can handle that. So I'm going to have to vote for Valheim. A lot of umming and awing, but yes, Valheim it is. Halo Infinite in second place, then Back for Blood. It takes two and, uh, I, I, and, and nothing else. <laughs> crab game i threw it on the floor i don't play that nobody should play that i don't know how it got so popular i mean i do because squid game but it shouldn't be as popular as it is it's such an insult although props to the developer i do suppose so uh next up we have labor of love yes dota 2 seems to get nominated every single freaking time <laughs> we've also got terraria of course Constant updates on Terraria, and Stardew for that matter. Oh, there's Rust. Hey, we were just talking about you. Amazing, as always. No Man's Sky has come back around. I think it's been on here for a few years too long, hasn't it? And then, of course, Apex Legends that has been continuously updated. And it has a story and such, which uh, doesn't really matter. Apex is kind of cool. I was into it like earlier this year for, for quite a little while until I realized that uh, the gunplay is super slow. You need to be able to focus somebody really well to break the shield and then get to their health and whatnot. Maybe that's telling of my lack of skill or something like that, but I don't think necessarily Apex is a labor of love. They sell a lot of stuff in it. <laughs> no Man's Sky, I also can't count that one because it's just been in here for too long. Yes, they're still working on it as they should. It's gotten to a playable state. I don't really know what else you want. Rust and Terraria are at the top of the list for me. Um, like I said, I've been out of the loop for a while, so I'm not sure which one has more updates. But um, just on principle alone, I'm going to go for Terraria. I don't think that it'll win. <laughs> but I might be surprised. There, There is a lot of love for Terraria out there. I just love these little indie games that are updated basically forever <laughs> how has terraria not been like okay we're good now the same with stardew valley i'm shocked to see concerned dame get on twitter and be like yeah we got a new uh expansion coming soon free expansion i should say a new addition so yeah i'm gonna go for terraria rust is i mean legitimately an amazing game one of my top played games of all time 
But um, I feel that they're in it for the money too. Get some little microtransactions on the Steam market and whatnot. Apex Legends, yeah, not necessarily a labor of love. Respawn does amazing stuff for uh, whatever shooty battle royale thing. It is really tasty, but I don't know. I fell out of love with it and just have not been able to fall back in love with it. No Man's Sky, I guess we'll, we'll give fourth place because it, it's just been on here for so freaking long, every year. Yeah, it's still a labor of love. We get it. <laughs> Great job, you guys. Uh, give it a rest. And then Dota 2 is also on here every freaking year. Um... I guess that's great, but it's just not my cup of tea, necessarily. So there it is, Terraria, Rust, Apex Legends, No Man's Sky, and Dota 2, in that order, for the labor of love. I think VR is up next, which, uh, I don't know nothing about that, man. I don't even have a VR headset. What's all this? <laughs> so, uh, Sniper Elite VR, Cooking Simulator VR. Ooh, that looks pretty fun, actually. We've got Medal of Honor. Above and beyond. Yeah, that's super hardcore cool stuff. I expect you to die too. Wow, I haven't played the first one. I guess I'm missing out on stuff. And then Blair Witch VR Edition, which was really a <laughs> pretty trash game if you play it and uh, it's not in VR. I can't assume it's that much better in VR. Maybe more immersive, so I will give it that. But the front runner for me, honestly, is probably Cooking Simulator VR. That sounds like a ton of fun. Sniper Elite comes up uh, right after that. Then I'd give you, uh, I expect you to die, Medal of Honor, and then uh, Blair Witch in the final slot. They also did put a uh, vote for us on the bottom of their banner, which shows some dedication. Cooking Simulator VR, they really wanted to win, didn't they? <laughs> so, okay, I've done my part. Hopefully they do, um, but honestly, I'll probably see Sniper Elite VR win just because people like uh, to do the shooties and whatnot. I'm pretty into Sniper Elite, like the entire series, but I can't imagine seeing it in VR makes it all that much better. Like, okay, you saw all their blood and bones explode and, uh, but it's in VR this time. <laughs> okay, cool. I guess. And really, uh, looking at the gameplay footage that they've loaded up here, you don't even see the, the slow-mo bullet bone cracking thing, which is like 90% of the <laughs> reason that I play Sniper Elite at all, ever. So, yeah, I'm sticking with Cooking Simulator VR. It seems like a happy, good, fun time for the whole family, and uh, I hope you guys win, even if you're doing a little bit of shilling on your banner. <laughs> That's fine. If you don't plug yourself, who's going to? And then we've got our final game of the year. Oh, yes. A lot of familiar faces. We've got Valheim. <laughs> New World? Are you serious, bro? <laughs> Cyberpunk. Oh, yes, uh, 2077 and Resident Evil Village, and we've also got Forza Horizon 5, which, uh, <laughs> we basically know what's gonna be in last place, don't we? God damn it, I didn't give Valheim the vote, uh, the time that they came up before, oh no, I did, god, I think I'm gonna have to vote for it twice, I really just freaking love Valheim, <laughs> Be a Viking, build your house, beat down trolls in the middle of the night. It's just so freaking good. It does make my computer run a little bit hot, <laughs> so I don't play it as much as I probably would like, but it is just a really, really tasty game. We've also got, um, you know, probably Cyberpunk bringing up the rear. Like I said, I haven't dived into it, but as a genre, I like Cyberpunk pretty good. Um, then we're left with the bottom three, Resident Evil Village, uh, Forza Horizon 5, and New World in that order. New World, God, what a joke that turned out to be, isn't it? <laughs> for some reason, people bought it. They, they thought it was like crack, paid for the game, sat through the queue <laughs> in order to log into said game, and then the game ends up crashing on them. It's just poetic justice as far as I'm concerned holy god I mean the the days of MMOs are long gone as far as I'm concerned and 
New World is just even more proof of that. <laughs> what a joke. If you bought it, uh, you have my deepest sympathies. Probably spent two hours sitting in the queue, <laughs> so you can't get a Steam refund, because it's over two hours sitting in the queue. I hope you enjoyed that game. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so pathetic. But yes, Valheim takes it home. Gotta do it. I'm just contractually obligated at this point. It is such an amazing game. It's on sale all the time. It's super cheap. I mean, why not pick it up? Come hang out with Dayton Does. Maybe we'll record a video. I don't know if it'll be too intensive with my editing software going at the same time, but I guess that's something we'll need to experiment with. Anyways, that has been my uh, just blabbering. Me saying, I don't know what this is a whole lot of fucking times <laughs> about the Steam Awards. But um, I am glad to be back, you know, up on my feet, got my computer and whatnot all ready to go. And um, we will get back into the gaming scene. I promise the 2022 Steam Awards, I will have a lot more to say about uh, each and all of the games. I keep my ear to the ground pretty good, even when I'm you know <laughs> grounded not online unable to play games that are this high in specs so yeah it is basically it i hope you guys will like comment subscribe check out red x over on youtube if you want to see me daily uh other than that yeah I i'll i'll figure out what to do with this channel eventually <laughs> it's kind of in stasis at the moment and i do apologize for that but if you're watching this video if you have watched it this far then you are the truest of mvps i will see you again probably later rather than sooner but i will be back again i do promise you that much thank you guys as always for watching i will see you in the next one and until then friends bye bye